Madrid and I'm here for FIBA TV in the beautiful Trinidad at Maracas Beach. We are here for Carnival and whilst here I have three simple goals. One, get a tan. Two, to work on my accent. And number three, to make sure FIBA TV gets you guys the best, and I mean the best, Carnival coverage that we can possibly get. We're going to all the parties. Of course, we're jumping up on the road for Carnival Tuesday. And in addition, we're doing all of the culture, the sights, the sounds, the taste, and the beautiful people that make this country the most wonderful place to be. And not just because the weather out here is legitimately perfect. All right, guys, so in the spirit of Carnival, let me go now and get some fun having. Hey Shannon, what you up to? Hey ya! Okay, so I'm trying to put together a killer list of things that we have to do while here in Trinidad yeah. for Carnival. Okay, so so far I have Juve, Clay Mass, mm -hmm. and Fet Till We Dead. <laughs> uh, that sounds like a good plan. Much for the list stops. Any suggestions? Well, I don't hear you have anything regarding Shark and Bake. Uh, who and what, what? Shark and Bake is a, a local cuisine regarding making, uh, frying some fish, and then also frying some pretty much fried dumpling and it's it's amazing so there's a place I actually know just in maracas bay that you could actually do it they'll teach you step by step and i think it would be something would, worth trying yeah i'm ready yeah. to try that double time okay <laughs> well when, when should we go i think we should go right now like right right now like right 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 now i'm a little hungry okay <laughs> all right let's go I'm official now, right? All right. All right. I'm ready for my close-up. Okay, we're ready, right? Yeah. All tucked in. So first thing is first, we have our pre-kneaded dough right here. Yeah. And this, what's the recipe to get the perfect bake? It's yeast, baking powder, sugar, and salt. When you finish kneading the flour, you put a little tip of oil to keep it smooth. Okay. But you okay. said this is all proportions that's in your head. Yeah. So I'm going to let you just... It's already done. We're not yeah. going to mess with that part. So what's next after that? My Trinidad and Tobago. Whoa, whoa. My Trinidad and Tobago. Keep my heart full of fire that burns so bright. Dedicated to everything that's right. Keep unity and equality. just reached Trinidad and you have no idea what to do for Carnival, well, you have come to the right place. The Carnival Village is the place to go to find out what's happening, what events, what galas, and of course, the history and origin of Carnival itself. If you can hear in the background, we have some traditional Calypso music happening each and every night. So we're going to go inside right now and meet some of the most important people when it comes to Trinidad Carnival and hopefully get a nice drink as well. As we go. Historians say they believe the first modern Caribbean carnival originated in Trinidad and Tobago in the late 18th century when a flood of French settlers brought the Fat Tuesday masquerade party tradition with them to the island. Although Fat Tuesday celebrations were almost certainly already taking place for at least a century.
of the National Carnival, yeah. as well as acting senator, and in addition to that, an amazing dancer as well, too. Did I miss anything? Shannon, you missed nothing. I missed nothing. You missed nothing. Well, you're a very important man. Thank you for your time tonight. Can you tell me a little bit about what this is? I know that this, the village is your brainchild, but what, how would you describe it? The village is the place that brings us back in time to what experiences people in our age group, around 50, 60 years old, had in Trinidad. You see, this is the village, a village in Trinidad, where all the peoples are together. African, Indian, Chinese, Caucasian, as one, our rainbow country, enjoying our art and culture. So that's what it's about. There's so many different incredible booths here that you can learn a lot from, not to mention all the beautiful costumes you have as well too. What can we learn about Carnival just from going around to different booths? Well, we have our history here. As a matter of fact, and it's important, important to mention, in this village, from 9 in the morning to 2 in the day, school children come and learn to play the pan, sing the kaiso, and also learn to make mass. Hence the reason we preserve our art form. If you go to the other booth on my right, which is the tassa, and you are hearing it now, is the strong Hindu culture and their music. So it's a whole cosmopolitan atmosphere in the village. What's incredible as well too is really learning about the history and origin of Carnival. So many of us think Carnival is just jumping up, it's fets, it's party. What is Carnival really trying to tell? What story is Carnival trying to tell us? The history and the development of Trinidad and Tobago. As I said, as I close on the last point, the Tassa is from India when the indented laborers came here. And then you have the conventional mass, what you will see Carnival Monday and Tuesday, which was brought to us by the British. And you have the traditional mass, which is the continuation of our culture in the community, small communities. There's a lot of African origins as well, too, even going back to the Jab Jab, some things that were brought to us from slave ships and brought over here to Trinidad. What does the significance of, we saw a lot of characters like, like the Blue Devil, like the Bats, what are the significance of those characters? Well, if you follow our history carefully, there's a village in Trinidad here known as Parmen, from where came the Blue Devils. And I'll give you a history of that briefly. In Parmen, for Carnival, the people they live way in the forest, on the hills. And they didn't have the opportunity to come into Port of and play that type mass. So they developed the technique and these methods to ensure that they, they bring forward to the nation a type of mass that's different, where they portray the type of bat and a type of devil to scare people from in the city from coming to affect them. So that's where the, the devils came from. And then you have the Warahoon Indians, when the Indians left Venezuela, they came across into Icacas and went to the forest of Bish. So the Waraun Indians, which still exist in Venezuela, is also in the mass in Bish. Well, I think it's so beautiful. Fever TV actually went to Nigeria this past summer, and you were mentioning you yourself were invited to go to Carnival over there. Because there are so many African origins from that we see now in Carnival today, how is Trinidad and Africa still linked together in the work that you do? If you visit some of our communities where we have the traditional and regional mass, and I, I give you a full day's tour, you'll be surprised to see some parts of Nigeria and its culture are maintained in Trinidad. Because remember, Central, West, and North Africa, there's a link between these areas. And in Trinidad, you know, a lot of uh, Africans came on the slave trip 
ships places from places like Cameroon. So you have the Cameroonian culture still in Trinidad and other parts of Africa still in Trinidad. So you have to you have to look and see that the cultures are still linked. Our people practice the dances when they play the stick fight because they do stick fight in parts of Africa also. So our cultures are, are, are linked and hence the reason we are trying to portray and highlight these types of carnivals so that the world can see Africa and Trinidad are still joined. And what's so amazing about what the village actually does is, although you do get a piece of that history on Carnival Monday and Tuesday, you guys have other events as well too, strictly to highlight the origins of Carnival. Yeah, yeah. Yes, we do. We have 54 what we call regional carnivals that the government fund through our committee, the NCC. And in each village, you have different types of traditional mass portrayed. And that's maintained. As a matter of fact, I'm glad you raised that point, Shannon. Tomorrow, over 5,000 children will be portraying traditional masks, which they made the costumes by their hands, purchased the, the, the material, and were taught by tutors who we sponsored. And they are walking around the savannah with music and so on. You have to visit that, and you are free to film it and take it back to Africa. Speaking of the word free, how is it that this entire thing is free during all two weeks of carnival? Simply because the government in its wisdom agreed with me that something must go back to the people. And if you look at the age group here, it's middle-aged people and young people and elderly people who have a place to get together and feel like a family and relax. Now, Don, if I were to ask you, this is my very first carnival, but a lot of people out there who do travel to Trinidad because they want to jump up in the streets, they spend their time going from fete to fete to fete. Why would you encourage them to do carnival differently? Because we, that's why I said the Carnival Village, there must be a place and a space for people to sit, relax, talk, have their children with them, have their grandchildren with them, and still involve, involve, be involved in the culture. All right, three things that I have to do while I'm here. Pardon me, I didn't hear you. I didn't hear what you said. Three things that I have to do while I'm here in the village that you recommend. One, you must go to Maracas Beach. Two, you must ensure that you drink a Trinidad fish broth. And three, ensure you eat a doubles. Thank you so much. Can we go out on your dancing? Pardon me? Can we go out on your dancing? Yes. I would love to see some of that footwork again. It was good. I only go out if I dance with you. Okay. Let's go. All right. We're here with Fitzgerald Henry, who is a development officer here at Pan Trinbago, and he's going to not only tell me a little bit about the importance of Pan, but teach me a little bit as well, too. Are you excited? Yes, I will do that. Now, this is a, a low tenor. Starts from low C and the piano up to high E. That's two octave and five notes, others, that you can use in playing any tune. Okay, so before we get into this and how terrible I'm going to be at this, I want to ask you about the importance of Pan to Carnival. Well, Pan really started after the, the Cambolay riot and the banning of the slave trade. The slave drum was banned and they went to the bamboo. And from the bamboo, when bamboo started burst, they started picking up all discarded drums. They made the instrument and and started in 1939 with Alexander Ragtime Band, and now it is all over Trinidad, all over the world. Everybody wants to play this instrument because it's the easiest instrument to learn to play music on. All over the world, people go in fit, and some of us in Trinidad do know the importance of it. All right, I'm inspired. So what you will, what I'll the lesson give you is how to play the C scale. And then my son will show you some other things. We'll get the more advanced person in here. So you're trying to say, you show me how it's done. Okay, I'm going to get Ola, our producer, to come in here for a second and help us out. And just hold the microphone.
Okay, so that was actually pretty impressive. I have yeah, to yeah, ask yeah. you though, what did I? How did I do as a first timer? No, it was good. It was good. When when you get your pan, half an hour day you keep practicing and then you know GFD is the easiest instrument to learn to play to learn to play on. Okay, so I hear that your son has only been playing for half an hour, that you've taught him, and then yeah, now yeah. he's going to show us what he learned in the past half hour. Do you want to come in and play for us? 